Thank you. 
like nine calls. <laughs>
and all the other people out there. And all the other guys. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, Jebusites and Hebusites and all the crazy parasites out there. Because it makes no difference what people are. The Word of God does not change. And sin is still sin. And the thing is that God, in His grace for a while, looks at it. But His Word is forever. This theology is being taught in school that we're all the same and there's no difference between us is the psychology of stupid. How many know? We're all different. You know how they find out who you are? By your what? Your fingerprints. Now, we're all the same. We all have the same fingerprint. It's a lie being brought forth by a society that's on its way to destruction. The only hope this society has is in the Word of God. And this ain't the first time this has happened. It's happened over and over and over again. It's amazing how they all say, if you don't learn from history, you repeat it. Well, it looks like we're repeating history again. But in Galatians, the third chapter, first verse, O foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Before whom I, Jesus Christ, have been definitely set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the work of the law or by the hearing of faith? That's a question. Are you so foolish? I, I, I put that in NIV. Are you, so, are you that stupid? <laughs> really, are you that stupid? That you got somebody coming to your church dangling these little, you know, oh, you can be rich forever. Oh, you can have a mansion. Oh, you can have every car you want. You can prosper and be everything. And no. That's just dangling carrots. So you can take the money. It's the biggest shyster you ever seen in your life with some of these preachers out there. All they want your money. They care less about anything else. They'll jeopardize everything and anything as long as they get paid for it. Which is sad. Is, are you so stupid having, I'm, that's my point of view, <laughs> having begun in the spirit and now you have made perfect by the flesh? There's a question mark there. You know, some people have got to read the word of God. Is he asking a question or making a statement? <laughs> I've heard this preached by uh, preachers making a statement. I'm going, that's a question, not a statement. I do believe you can get uh, through your goodness that you can perfect yourself. <laughs> How many know there is none righteous, no right one? None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. Including pastors. The worst thing I've ever seen pastors do is not admit they're wrong. <coughs> you know? If you're wrong, you're wrong. I can be the pastor, you're, you're on the board, or whatever you are. Sometimes you all make mistakes. Right? But maturity in people's lives will bring forth, hey, I made a mistake. Forgive me. Move on. Amen? Amen? I made a mistake. Forgive me. Move on. I mean, I cannot believe how many people can't move on from the mistake. I know Christians who can't move on from their own mistakes. You got 
to look forward and not backwards. Jesus, anybody who looks back isn't worthy of the cross. Looking back ain't going to help you at all. He goes, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit and now ye have made perfect in the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain? In other words, you've done all this stuff to come to this point and you just throw it all away? Really? He therefore that ministers through you in the spirit and work of miracles among you, doeth he do it by the work of the law or by the hearing of faith? How many know the law doesn't do nothing but condemn you, judge you, and bring you into condemnation? Amen. But faith brings you into that love, forgiveness, and moving on with your life. Amen? Amen. It goes on and says, even as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Just because he believed in God. Just because he knew that there was something greater and more than himself. Knowing that, that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Abraham was a, was a father of faith because he believed what God said to him when he said, go possess that land and whatever you step you take, the land is yours. That crazy old guy believed him and went out and became a father of many nations. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, And thee shall all nations be blessed. And then they shall be blessed, are blessed with a faithful Abraham. So as many as are of the work of the law are under the curse. You know, I go to some of these churches and, and they're still doing the things of the Old Testament. Oh, you know, we got, you don't want to call him Jesus. You know, that's the wrong name. You want to call him uh, 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 Jesus. They want to call him different names. You know, how crazy is that? I mean, how crazy is that? But they want to bring people into bondage, to bring them under their control. How many, how many know people like to control other people? You don't believe, watch the news, watch the Democratic Party. They love controlling people. They want you to think like them, act like them, talk like them. And you know, they want, they're saying, oh, we're going to give everybody everything. We're going to give all free health care. We're going to put a car on every driveway. We're going to have a job for you. We're going to give you everything that you ever wanted. Vote for me. You know, the only person that gets everything they wanted is them. Everybody else starves to death in the street. They promise everything and they deliver nothing. They oh, if you go to college and you graduate, you're going to get a great job. Well, not, not necessarily true. You can try your best and, and, and achieve what you can do, but there's ever no guarantees in life. You know, it saddens me when I hear of this in these colleges. That somebody comes and shoots these kids in college. All their lives they work toward that. Ready to graduate. Oh, and then they get shot dead. What? What a shame. It's horrible. But the reality of it is you don't know about tomorrow. You only know about today. Amen. And hopefully today's a good day. Amen. I've had some bad days. And I've had some good days. But through it all, I've learned one thing. That the day until Jesus comes is going to be the sun's coming up, the sun's going down. And I love these people about climate change. Man, I learned that in school. You know, summer, winter, spring, and fall. And some years it's hotter. Some years it's colder. Some years, like this year in California, it rained like crazy. 202% of the snowpack. 202%. I've been telling people how sad all the politicians spent millions of dollars on those drought pamphlets stuck in a warehouse waiting for it. They're praying for drought. Because the fact that they wasted a ton of money on this stuff and nobody's reading it now. Because, you know, they're right. How many know politicians are always right and never wrong? Because, you know, they always do the right thing. 
You know, the Bible talks about there's only one righteous one. And they killed him. And the way our society is running is they don't care about society in a whole. They only care for the fringes. You know, it's amazing how we know the truth, but we can't walk in that truth. It goes on and says, The law under the curse, it is written, Curses everyone that committeth, continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. How I many know nobody can do that? Nobody can do that. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is ev this heaven for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live by them. Wow. But praise God. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. But the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. How many know Jesus did not come to start a religion? But boy, look at all the religions that came out of Christ. Look at all of them. That's why I get in trouble with all the religions. Because Jesus didn't say, now wait a second, before you go preach the gospel, because you know, we don't think you're smart enough, we want you to go to four years of Bible college. Then, 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 then we want you to be a, under somebody for four to eight years. And then maybe, if you're lucky, you might get the opportunity. You know what? Uh, I was in those meetings, and I raised my hand and said, excuse me, I, can I say something here? If somebody gets saved and filled the Holy Ghost and, and runs out and starts getting people saved and getting people filled the Holy Ghost and bringing your church and, and exploding your church, uh, that's wrong. Because he's not ready, prepared for the gospel. Yes. How many people are lost and going to hell because of that, of that theology? So I know a man that he was a he was an army ranger and he was one heathen dude. One heathen dude. But one day, he was going down the freeway, and somebody ran in the back of his truck doing 130 miles an hour. He was thrown through the windshield all the way over the freeway to the other side of the freeway, rolled down in the basement. When the police were looking for somebody had to be in this truck. This truck wasn't just sitting there. And they looked and they, looked, they couldn't find him. Couldn't find him. And finally one ambulance guy said, I'm going to look over there. And sure enough, where he, where he killed, there he was sitting in the ditch over the other side. We're talking, he was thrown over 150 feet in the air. That's a long ways of flight. And what was more surprising, he was alive. Not wearing a seatbelt probably saved him. <laughs> but while he was in the hospital, an angel of God came to him and started talking to him. And says, you're not going to be this no more. No more. I'm, you're going to change your life. And you're going to do according to what I have called you to do. And that's all he said. So this guy gets in the Bible and starts reading it and gets excited and starts bringing over 200 people to this church. And they're all excited. Oh, this guy's bringing all the people here. But he's not trained. What should we do? He can't do this. He's not trained. So they told him, well, you need to go back on it. Well, I, I, God didn't call me that. Call me called to save the lost. That's what I'm doing. Oh, no, 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 no. First you got to get, get, get Bible called and then you get licensed. Oh, by the way, have you ever been buried before? <laughs> Well, yes, I, I was married years ago and divorced. <gasps> oh, uh, 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 no, 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 our denomination. Well, well I believe it was of God. Just to let everybody know. Sinners of God. Here's a man who God 
miraculously saves them, brings forth them, and starts bringing them. And the religious people did everything in their power to destroy him. Then one day, he was driving his truck and came across my church. And God said, go in and talk to this guy. And so it happened, I was in, in that uh, church. And the church was open. And he comes in and starts talking to me. And he was really leery. I started talking to him about things and kind of find out that he got a quick lesson in we are followers of Christ, not men. How many of you are followers of Christ, not men? I don't give a rap what men say. I could care less of them, what they say. I want to know what did God say about this? How did God bring this forth? Huh? Amen. How did God make us not stupid? Because I try to cast out stupid. And it doesn't work. But I did ask the Lord, Lord, how do I get, how do I pray for stupid? And he took me to James and says, he didn't have lacks wisdom. <laughs> Let him ask for wisdom and he'll give it to other abundantly. How many know wisdom will expel stupid? It really does. Wisdom expels stupid. So I started praying, God, bring wisdom to them. I said, okay, now, here's all what you're doing. Lord, give me wisdom to understand the nature of who you are, what you are, that I may know the attributes of you, that I may walk in you. Amen? Not in the teachings of others, but in the love of you. And the word of God made me in my life, so I'd be able to do what you want me to do unfeathered. When I was with the organizations, they always wanted to chain you up or hook you up or do something to you to get you under control. I was there. I was there. I felt like a red-headed stepchild in most organizations because I wasn't according to what they wanted me to do or wanted me to be. They looked, oh, you know, Daniel never pastor a big church preaching like that. And well, who told you I wanted a big church? See, in their mind, success is hundreds of thousands of people coming and worshiping you. I'm against work pastor worship. There's too much worshiping of pastors in, in, in our society. Oh, look at this man. Look what he all can do. He can do nothing without Christ. Zero. But with, with him, I can do what? All things. All things in Christ. Walking in love, walking in forgiveness, walking uh, in, uh, in this manner leads to a blessed life. One preacher said, even if God wasn't true, and it was all just fake, I have been blessed by walking in love. Because I have no guilt, I have no remorse, I have none of that that I see other people have. I have no... Uh, condemnation. I don't walk in in in, in my mistakes. I, I'm happy in Christ. He goes. I see others without Christ in misery and, and, and walking in torment. He goes. I'm glad that I'm not one of them. And if I'm wrong, I have, I lost nothing. Right. If I'm wrong, I've lost nothing. But well, unfortunately, what happens if I'm right? I've gained all things. So either way you look at it, I'm a winner. <laughs> either way you look at this, I'm a winner. Because I understand how to walk and how to live my life and not get messed up with people's drama. How many know that everybody likes to give me their drama? But you know what? I leave it at the cross. Every night I go to bed, I wake up in a new day. That day is gone. I can't, nothing I can do about it. But today I have something to do about it. Today I can go forth. Today I can uh, change people's lives. Today I can be an influence on others to do that according to what's right in their own lives. Amen? You know, the Bible says your heart don't condemn you. Amen? If you, you don't have no condemnation in your heart, no one else has a right to condemn it. Amen? I'm going to tell you a story that I'm going to quit. My first church in Gold Bar, I had a family. It was a huge family. Came into the church, and they're all excited. 
where there's only a church in town. So yeah, they're all excited. They found a church, right? And he comes to me and says, Pastor, I want you to come to my house. And they live in a trailer out in the middle of nowhere. So I get in my car and I go out there and, and he invites me in and the first thing he does is pop a beer open. And the first thing he does is pop a beer open. I understand that was his normal. And he was talking to me about how he loves the Lord and wants to come closer to the Lord. And da, 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 da. You know, and I really wanted to say something to him. Really did. But, but I, I kept my mouth shut. And I think God told me to keep my mouth shut. You know, sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut. Say nothing and act like you got wisdom. Over your mouth and nobody knows you're a fool. Anyhow, just say a word to this guy. I leave. We pray. And I leave. And as I'm going down the road and thinking, you know, Lord, maybe I should have said something. And the Lord said, no, no, no. He reminded me of the old pastor came to me and says, Dan, as a fisherman, you catch the fish, the Holy Spirit cleans them up. And that rang in my, my soul for many years, still does. So I, he comes to church Sunday, and he's, all, he's really excited. He's really excited. I mean, he said, Pastor, I want to testify. Oh, hey, go, go for it, brother. Go for it. He gets up and says, yo, Pastor, Dad, get into my house, and we talked about the Lord. He prayed for me, and we had a great time. He goes, then, he goes, then I went and sat down, and, and the Lord spoke to me. I said, and I went, oh, what, what did he say, you know? <laughs> the guy says, Lord says, love thou me more than these. And he said, yes, Lord. He goes, I opened up every can of beer I had and poured it down the drain. Because I love God more than I loved anything else. When I'm sitting on the, I'm, I'm sitting on the platform, right, thinking to myself, I would have robbed this guy. I would have I, I could have told him, you know, brother, you shouldn't be drinking beer and say you're a Christian. I could have said that to him. I would have robbed him of the joy that God gave to his life because God spoke to him. I know people that God says, quit drinking coffee. And they're obedient. And quit drinking coffee. I know people, God says, don't drink that pop no more. And they don't. I'm using that as an example that even the littlest things God says in our, our obedience, great joy comes from obedience. Amen? Amen? But I tell you, God really spoke to me about that, about never rob somebody of the joy that I can give unto them. How many know religion likes to take your joy from you? Oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to be there. Oh, you got to do that. Oh, no, 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 no. A lot of churches, I'd be throwing out for having my, you know, short sleeve shirts on because, you know, women get turned off by men's forearms or something. <laughs> oh, I look too sexy and a little hairy to me. I don't know. I won't tell you what I told them. <clears throat> I won't tell you what I told them, but, but the children are allowed. But the thing is that other men love to put their convictions on you. Amen? Amen. Other men love to put their convictions on you. But we have something that they don't. We have liberty in Christ Jesus. And who bewitched you to tell you you can or cannot do what you do? But God gave us freedom and understanding to move. And if your heart condem condemns you not, who am I to condemn you? If God talks to you, I will not let God talk to you. The reason why I like small churches is because there's less drama here. The big churches, you can't get in here to pastor. You know, they got, they got guns. I mean, the pastor has security guards around him. Don't be too close to pastor. You might be a threat. Come on, man. What, are you so afraid of dying? You preach that you live everlasting, but you live in fear of somebody shooting you? That's strange. How foolish are you to die is the game? We stay here for others may know who Jesus is in his love. Let's stand. We're going to pray. I talk too much. It's over, kids. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the word, Lord, that we are not condemned with the world, but we are free from the world through faith. 
And our faith is in you, Lord, and not in no man. Not in a denomination, but Lord, in you only we trust. In you only, Lord, do we serve. And Lord, we thank you, Father. And we give you glory for all things. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you keep guiding us and leading us into all your love and your life. And we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Love one another.